Hi everyone, this is Jay Johnson with the Daily Texture Project from jart.com. Um, today I've already done the image that I was going to work on, but something came up when I was working on this image and I thought I might could give you a good tip. So I decided to create this video to show you this little tip on how you can adjust just a part of your image using the texture. All right, let me shut this off. This is the texture I was using. It's today's daily texture called Summer Path. And you notice there's a dark area here and some bright light here. This makes this texture, because of the darks and the lights and the way they play off of each other, it makes it a great texture to use with those photos you might have that were taken in harsh sunlight like this cheetah right here. You can see he's in very harsh sunlight. He's got really bright areas here, really dark shadows here, his face is in shadow here. So what I did is I decided to use this cheetah with this texture. And like I said, I've already done this part, so I'm going to take you down to show you what I've done. I masked away his background, blending the text. I actually resized him a little to fit him where I wanted. I wanted these light areas to be hitting around his head where the light was really bright. So I've already masked away everything, resized him to make him fit the way I wanted to. Masked some of his body away to allow the texture under him to just come through and then I duplicated the texture layer and I put it on top setting it to soft light at 76 percent and I also if you noticed up here on saturation I lowered the saturation on that texture layer just a little bit because it made this stuff right here real yellow when it was highly saturated so I adjusted that to minus 40 uh, that particular layer, the soft light layer, just to keep the saturation under control. And I like the way this is looking, but here's where today's tip comes in. The only thing I don't like is the eyes. And I'm going to blow this up so you can see. The eyes are very, very dark. You can't really see the golden color that's in his eyes, and that's simply because of the original photo, the direct sunlight that was on him, the way he had his face kind of tilted down it made his eyes look really dark and for my final image I did not want dark eyes I wanted the viewer to be able to see a little bit of the color in his eyes and I could sit there and play with the original photo layer and try to adjust those colors out but it just was a lot faster for me to do a little something else so what I did was I duplicated the texture layer and put it on top and I'll show you what I did here let me get this back okay so I duplicated the main texture layer again put it on top of everything and then I started playing with layer modes I started going down here and trying different layer modes to see what they did to the image and I got down here to color dodge and all of a sudden I noticed the eyes were a lot brighter than they were in the image I had you know completed up to this point and I thought now that those eyes are looking pretty good with that color dodge the rest of it looks like crap but you could see how it does give color to his eyes when you turn it off and on you can see the difference so here's what I decided to do I decided to use this color dodge layer I uh, moved it around a little bit to really make sure the golden area of the texture was right over the eyes. And then I decided to create a mask and get rid of everything else except for what is happening here with the eyes. So the way I did that really quickly is in Topaz you have an ability to invert a mask. Um, I could start masking away all of this, which would take me a lot longer. But if I hit invert, it totally wipes away the texture. See, it's gone, but it's still there. It's right here. 
but it just totally reversed everything. Now what I want to do is I want to put back the golden color that appeared on the eyes before I inverted it. I want to put that just over the eyes. So I'm going to blow up this image so I can see the eyes really good. I've got uh, my brush size is already set to go in there really nice. I've moved my brush value all the way over because I'm going to be, instead of taking texture off since I've already inverted it, I'm going to be putting it back on. I adjusted my flow, which is like opacity. It's kind of right in the middle there, so it won't put it on real strong. It'll put it on enough, though. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start gently using the brush and go over the eyes, and that's actually putting it back on. And there we go. Now he has golden eyes. The problem is they're a little bit too golden because this one is, especially on the right here, is looking a little bit uh, washed out and it does need to have a little contrast. So what I'm going to do is reduce the opacity of this particular layer. This is all the way down with nothing done and then I just start moving it around till it looks right and I ended up with I think I ended up in the finished image with about 25 percent. That just gives a little bit of brightness there. Um, you can actually see on my mask here it's all black except for two little white spots where the eyes are. And if I turn it off and then on, I could make them a little bit more gold. But see then it starts, that right one starts looking a little bit washed out. And I don't want it to look washed out. I want it, I know there's going to be shadow on the eyes and you got to think realistically. You know, um, well I do anyway. You don't have to but I want it to look like it makes sense to the viewer and if I have it all the way up here it's not going to make sense because he's got direct sun hitting the top of his head which means his eyes are going to be in shadow I just didn't want him to be in so much shadow so I'm going to reduce this down I think I had it at 25 percent on my original and turn it off turn it back on turn it off turn it back on that looks pretty good but I like to always zoom out to look at the final image and go out as far as you know not till it's too small where I can't see it that gives me a view of the whole picture as if I was seeing it across the room from a distance now this is with the layer off that I just made and this is with it back on and it just brightens up those eyes just a little bit I could probably go a little brighter see how you go too bright it that right one looks funny to me um, so I'm going to keep it around 25% just simply because I like that. It just shows a little bit more of the golden color, but yet the eye is still in shadow as it should be, you know, realistically. So that's off and that's on. So I just wanted to show you that little trick on how you can use the same texture you're using for a background to adjust just a portion of your image. And by playing with the different layer modes and in this case all I wanted to adjust was the eyes because I like the way everything else looks around here everything else looks good to me but eyes when you're doing um, portraits with animals and birds your eyes are your most important part I could um, add a little bit more contrast and make more adjustments if I wanted to to those eyes brighten them up uh, like I could raise the exposure up to see how that just is a little bit too much so I'm gonna leave it just like I had it because that makes sense but they're just a little bit more golden color it's showing up now and that's all from just using the texture as a layer mode on top of the image and getting rid of everything except for brushing it back in where I wanted the adjustment and then moving this opacity to make it look like it makes sense. Anyway, I hope that little tip will help you in your work. Um, like I said, today's Daily Texture Summer Path is a great one to use with these photos that have harsh sunlight. Um, you might want to try it out with some of your animal or bird photos or even people photos that you may have a subject in harsh sunlight and you want to put you want to match up the areas of the light on your subject with the light on the texture where the lightest areas are. Um, 
this area was darker on the texture, this area was darker on the cheetah, so I positioned him where that area would kind of blend in nicely, and I did blend away quite a bit of his body there just to make it look faded, so it's not such a harsh transition. And also, by yeah, he had a little patch of brightness right here. By blending away his body and allowing the texture to show through right there, it took down that brightness right there. I kept the brightness right here where I wanted it. But over here, the texture was real dark over there on this side. And it didn't make sense to have a very bright patch of fur right there in the middle of the darkness over here. So I did brush some of that over. I mean, brush some of that body away. So that would allow the darker area of the texture to come through and kind of tone that down. Anyway, I hope this helps you in your workflow and have fun with today's daily texture. Thanks for watching.